Hey guys, and welcome to the Friday Q&A series about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Every Friday I answer your questions. That's a format that I had here on the channel for a long time last year when DaVinci Resolve was introduced and I made a video about DaVinci Resolve every single day. But after like a couple of times, the questions were repetitive and so I stopped with the Q&A series, so sorry for that. But today I have another video of those that will also go into the playlist here with the Q&A series. So if you take it serious about DaVinci Resolve and you want to learn a lot, these Q&A videos are the most condensed version of a lot of information about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. In today's video I have nine questions for you and let's start straight with the first one. This was on the video translate subtitles with chat GPT in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. Good way, but GPT is expensive for me. So so I choose to use Immersive Translate to help my translation video subtitles in real life. So the video I was talking about here, and this is this video here, Translate Subtitles with ChatGPT. So you can use DaVinci Resolve and make a subtitle. In this video, I explain you how this works. If you haven't seen that, definitely check out this video. And I also show you how easy it is to create a document, like a document with the timestamps, and then take that document and just give it to ChatGPT. So the reason why I answer this question now, which is not really a question, is number one, you don't have to pay for that. You can do this with the free version of ChatGPT, so you don't need the paid version. And also, I mean, of course, you can use any kind of translation software. So for example, when I translate stuff on my uh, website, I use, for example, DeepL. That's a very good uh, AI that I'm using, but this is just for translating. So I used or I checked the website he was talking about, Immersive Translate. I have never experimented with that one. You can probably translate whole websites and everything, so it's probably a good tool. And the point why I'm making this video today is if you want to make subtitles in a different language and you want to have at least work as possible, that's why in this video here, I show you the fastest way that I use. If you find another tool you can do this, of course, go for it. But you don't have to pay for it because ChatGPT in the free version works for that. Next question, really cool, but it would be helpful if you explained why one would even like to use different color spaces in one project. So the video he's referring is this one here, timeline settings you should know about. When 18.5 came out, there is now a setting that you can, for example, any timeline in your project, you can give it a different color space. So in this video, I just show that this is possible. To answer that question, it's actually very simple. It depends on if you have different cameras or you wanna create different outputs. So for example, let's say I have HDR videos from my iPhone, but not every device is capable of viewing HDR. To control that experience, you should actually make like a Rec. 709 timeline. What does it mean? If you create a Rec. 709 timeline, you don't have the HDR um, color space, but you control, like I just said, but you control how the viewing, viewing experience is for all of the devices. But let's say in the same project, now you want to make a short and that short you want to use the HDR capability. Then in this timeline, you could change it to the color space of the HDR. So, and that is basically also the reason. If you have multiple different cameras and you want to use it for the outcome, then you would use that. In the past, you had to create new projects for that. But now you don't have to do this anymore. You can do it in the same project. You can just copy a timeline and change the color space and do all the adjustments and then you're done. Next question, may I know how to make it into a countdown timer? So he's talking about this video here. I made a video how to add a timer in DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. If you haven't seen that one, definitely check out this one. So I prepared already something. So here in my timeline right now, I have a countdown. If you want to know how you can do this here with the like the, the timing, the timer, then watch the other video. So what I will show now today is how can you do it in the reverse? So basically a countdown. And that's actually very simple. After you finished all of this, so you, you still do the same like in the video. You have a custom text that you change to the timer, that you customize everything how it should look like. Now if I'm done, so for example in this example I have 1 to 10, so it's counting from 1 to 10. Now I can click this in the edit page. So make sure you are on the edit page because there are still people coming to my channel that don't know that we have edit page, Fairlight, Fusion. Yes, we can have them on the iPad. And there's a separate video here on my channel where I explain you how you can unlock them. It's basically a shortcut. But anyway, you come here to the edit page and then you say right click on this one. And now you say new compound clip and you can call it something like countdown. And then okay, now you have a separate clip and this clip works like every regular clip. So now I can right click on this one and I can say change clip speed. And when I'm opening this window here, I can say reverse speed. And if I change this now and if I hit play, you see that it's now counting backwards, 10, 9, 8, and so on and so on. This is how you create a countdown in DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Next question. <laughs> this was on a video on how to fix sound with echo. So praise be, you are doing God's work out here. You have stopped me from attempting to kickstart a landmine. Thank you. 
<laughs> I don't know what to say if I see comments like this, but I guess it means very good. You didn't kickstart a landmark. Next question. Wow, this is amazing. Thanks for showing the timeline too. Helps to see the work involved. What she was talking about was this video that I made here. I just- You wanna see something cool? Look at this. So that is a short here on my YouTube channel. And when I created this short it was basically to highlight the transition pack for the Vinci Resolve on the iPad. So many people don't know that yet, but if I show you this here, we created a complete seamless transition pack for the Vinci Resolve on the iPad. So this is optimized. These are different types of transitions that you can load in the iPad version and then per drag and drop, just place it onto your footage and then it works. You can create those zoom in effects and everything. And what people don't know, we, we sell this pack separate, but if you get the DaVinci Resolve iPad Masterclass. Since I started and launched the iPad Masterclass, I added so many more bonuses, visual effects packs. So if you come here to the site, you will find a link in the description. You see everything that is in the core, but then also here you see all the different bonuses. So the transition pack is a free bonus if you are a Masterclass student. So you can speed up your workflow with those transition packs. You have film grain packs. You even have now the speed ester. You even have now the Speed Editor Masterclass that I launched this year is also part of the Masterclass. You have a sound effects library and you also have a social media pack library and lots of lots of things. Just double check here the website to see what's all included. So next question was on the video, iPad as a second monitor and use the Apple Pencil. So please explain why it doesn't work with the iPad Pencil. So the video we are talking about is this video here. In this video, I show you how you can use your iPad as a second monitor if you have a Mac. And it's actually very simple. You, you just have to come up here, right click on the screen arrow, and then you say move to your iPad. And when you do this and it moves to your iPad, you will now see this on your iPad. So what he was talking about, if you use the pencil, you can actually interact with this as it was would be your mouse. And for some strange reason, you can't do this with your finger. But it's not completely true. If you, for example, use two fingers, you can scroll, you can still do that. But to explain that a little bit, I have no idea why it's not completely working. You have to use the Apple Pencil, but it is the idea to have this as a second monitor, not to replace it. So it's cool that we can use the pencil to interact, but you would still work on your main laptop and use the mouse and the keyboard here. It is just an additional bonus that you can use also the keyboard here to type in stuff. Like for example, if I come up here, and I type something, I can use even the keyboard here and I can use the Apple Pencil. So don't ask me why you can't use the finger. I guess, I guess I have no real answer to that. So next question was on the video, easy scale waveform in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. And he writes simply, it didn't work. What didn't work, but let's, let's double check that. It's this video here, scale waveform. And in this video, I show you that when you come to DaVinci Resolve, and you have these waveforms here, right? Sometimes they are very small, but you don't want to increase the loudness. You just want to see the waveform. And what you can do is you can come to the Fairlight page. And here in the Fairlight page, if you have a keyboard, you can hit Option Command and use the mouse wheel. So basically two fingers here on the trackpad. And I come and I hover over here with my, my mouse and then I can use the trackpad. You have to be very fast. This is a little bit annoying, but you see, I can increase it. It doesn't increase the volume or the loudness. It just zooms in so I can see more. So it still works. So what I believe what happened with this guy is he was still on the edit or cut page. You have to come to the Fairlight page. It only works here in the Fairlight page. It doesn't work on the edit page, but I say that in the video as well. Next question was on how to export project archives in DaVinci Resolve. And he's just writing, there is hope. I mean, DaVinci Resolve, uh, probably this was a funny comment, but DaVinci Resolve on the iPad is an amazing software. It is the same software like on desktop. Yes, there is a couple of limitations based on the iOS version. And it's not really the DaVinci version that doesn't work. It is more that some of the features don't work, but Blackmagic decided to port the complete software. So every time when we have a new update with a new version, we also get the new version here on the iPad. And it is the complete software. And I think this is, yeah, there is hope. There is hope that in the future, I mean, I do this already. I use my iPad for almost everything business related, video related. I barely have to go here to my MacBook. So next question, where did you get your editing keyboard for the M4? So first of all, I don't have the M4 yet. I still make my videos on my M1 and I decided against the M4 because for me, this wasn't really a performance boost. I know it is faster than the M1. So if you're coming from an older device, I would say definitely upgrade. And if you want to use DaVinci Resolve, perfect. And it is faster, but 
M1 was already very fast. I don't run into limitations where my iPad, where I, where I need the M4. And that's why I didn't upgrade it. And for example, there was one showcase. I don't have the video right here, but one of our um, community members, Chris, he sent me the videos. Some of the transitions that lag a little bit, doesn't mean that you cannot edit it. It just lags by previewing. They were still lagging with M4. So it got like a little bit of improvement. So I guess it's not the power of the chip, it's more how the software is coded or whatever the reason is. You maybe know that better than me. Uh, if you know, let me know in the comments. But the, the, when I saw that, I saw that it's not a big bump for me to now upgrade to the M4. But let's answer the question. The editor keyboard that I have is from one of our partners and they are called Editor Keys. And they have all kinds of different of these uh, how do you say that? This one that you can just put on top of your keyboard. And it doesn't work with the new keyboard. So if you have the M4, I think we still have to wait until they finished it. So I, I just checked the website, I don't see it yet. So this is still for the old keyboard. So if you have the old keyboard and you have Final Cut Pro or you have DaVinci Resolve, you can use this and it exists for the 11 inch and also for the 12.9 inch or 13 inch models. So I guess in the future, they will also make an update to that one as well. But there's a link here in the description if you want to get one of those and also then get the channel gets a kickback, definitely check it out. This is just making editing life a bit easier. Also, I made a video here on my channel where I unboxed these kind of covers. So it's this one here, use this new DaVinci Resolve iPad keyboard unboxing. And I also have one, I think, uh, oh yeah, if you have like a European keyboard like me and the Z and Y is uh, switched, I also have a video and explain you how you can change that in the settings so that it works. And then I also have the video for Final Cut Pro. The same here, there's an unboxing video and also explaining how to reverse that so you can actually use it. If you are like me and you're from Germany and you still have the German keyboard. If you're from the US or UK, then they work straight out of the box, everything is fine. So that was the last question for this Q&A series. If you enjoyed this series, there is more in the playlist here. Definitely go through these videos if you are still a beginner for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. If you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, I made a complete masterclass for you where everything is in it, not even the basics, even all the advanced techniques, because we figured out that you have all of the different pages, like the Fusion page, like the Edit page, and all of these advanced techniques I also talk about in the masterclass. So this is the masterclass for you. Definitely check out the link. And if you like this video, hit like, subscribe, ding-a-ding-a-ding-a-bang-bang-gong, and we see us in the next video. I'm Daniel. Bye.